Hey, what's up, everybody? Landon with Delamar.com. We're going to be talking specifically about a 1979 to 1986 four-eyed Mustang part. We finally have the run channel trims. At the time of this video, a few years or so ago, we released the run channel trims for the 1987 to 1993 cars. Whenever we did, had a lot of good feedback, obviously, from those owners. But you four-eyed owners were expressing interest as well. I can finally say these are now available. So the 5.0 Resto run channel trims for the four-eyed cars. Uh, they're going to have factory dimensions and tolerances, and they are a factory reproduction of the original. Uh, they're going to be available in one finish, which is trim black. So speaking of the finish, if you have an SVO or an 85-86 GT, these can be prepped and painted using the LMR dark gray exterior paint. In the box will be a left hand and a right hand or driver side and passenger side run channel trim and then pre-installed into the larger boomerang section, as I like to call it just because it looks like a boomerang, you have the little L brackets installed into that one. With the run channel trims, we're also gonna give you two retaining screws. Here at the front of the boomerang piece, there's a little slot in the trim where these get retained to the door frame using the screw. Oh, and before I forget, these run channel trims will ship in a purpose-built box with foam that has been cut to fit each specific piece. So uh, some nice packaging to go along with the run channel trims as well. So for those of you wondering why you probably need run channel trims, well, I think it's quite simple. Uh, this is a Fox Body Mustang we're dealing with. They're either missing or they're damaged. And uh, how these get missing is, well, that's pretty obvious. They get taken off and they never get put back. And then the way they get damaged could be from, I don't know, name your scenario. If somebody in there with a Slim Jim, you know, prying on it and prodding on it can, uh, can dent the aluminum, previous hail damage, and just overall carelessness, if you will, as to why these could get damaged. And these are made from aluminum. Uh, that's about the only material you can make these out of. With that, you still wanna be careful with these as well. So touching base real quick on the bright silver finish. A lot of you are probably thinking, well, what do I do? There's a few methods you could go about this. You can have all the trim prepped and cleaned and then probably drop it off at your local powder coater. Or if you don't wanna do any of that, you can remove the paint uh, from the trims and then use some sandpaper and step that out into a finer grit until you achieve the look that you're going for. Get creative with it, see which way works best for you, but I don't think you can go wrong with either way, and that's just kind of one of those compromises that we have when we're dealing uh, you know, with aftermarket and reproduction parts. So now that we've covered all of that, uh, we're gonna be working on the 83 GT. Don't judge the car too hard, okay? It's a work in progress. Y'all hear me say that on a lot of videos, but you know, as we roll these parts out, you know, we can slowly chip away at making the cars better and uh, getting them back into fighting shape. So uh, I think I've covered everything. We'll list a few videos down in the description below, especially the one for the 8793 run channel trims, which we do a lot more heavy lifting in that video. We prep the frames, we paint the frames, you know, we go into more detail about the run channel weather strip. We touch base on all that here whenever we install these on the 83 GT. So uh, we've got everything covered. Uh, so uh, let's get rolling. All right, everybody. Uh, we're over here on the baby blue boss, as we call it. This is the 83 GT. Uh, the car has been in the stable for a while now. Uh, and like many times y'all hear me say on video, it's a work in progress. And that's what we're dealing with today. Uh, but this is a good candidate to show uh, the run channel trim. We've got a few things apart already. A run channel weather strip's already out of this car. The mirror is already removed from this car, but all this stuff is real easy to get to. Uh, all these cars had manual adjust mirrors. So the first thing you'll do is use a little Allen key or Allen wrench, 564. You'll loosen the set screw, holding the adjuster body to the inside mirror hole cover. After that, you can remove the Phillips head screw, holding the mirror cover to the door, roll it out of your way, and then remove the two nuts securing the mirror assembly to the door frame. Those are 11 30 seconds. After you do that, uh, you can poke the grommet through and then remove the mirror from the car. Whenever you have the mirror removed from the car, the next step is the outer door belt weather strip. This weather strip and molding, it's uh, one complete piece on the 79 to 86 cars, so you'll remove both pieces at the same time. And then on some cars, you have this like little tab, if you will. The mirror actually kind of grabs that and holds it in place. So this could look just a little different throughout the 79 to 86 year range. But what you want to do, you want to be real careful. You don't just want to, you know, yank these up, especially if you have good moldings and good weather strip on your car. Now, if you're replacing them and they're already, you know, just foobard, <laughs> you know, you can just, I guess, go as you will. But I usually like to start here at the front and just gently roll my fingers underneath the, uh, front of the uh, molding here and carefully start to pry up uh, and then when you pry up you want to always pry from the uh, closest attaching point to the door frame because if you pull way back here 
you run the risk of, uh, of bending it. And I think these have been off the car so many times, so they're actually already a little bent. And then as you work your way down the door, uh, when you get back here, don't just pull up uh, because you can't scratch this. Now, we're replacing these run channel trims on this particular car, and I'll touch base on this here in just a second. But for any of you that may find this video and you're just doing generalized work and your run channel trims are good, uh, they have a good finish to them, if you just start pulling up on the rear of this molding here, you're gonna scratch uh, your vertical piece of uh, run channel trim. So as you get to the end here, pull it back towards the front and then get it out of your way. One thing I forgot to mention as well, roll your window down. Okay, so the run channel trims on this particular car, these actually are the 5.0 Resto run channel trims that we've just installed, so we can show you how to take them off. Uh, we are going to be using these same trims to put back on the car. But up here at the front, you're gonna have a Phillips head screw that you'll need to remove. This screw may be here, this screw may not be there. It all depends on your car. If somebody was there before you, which more than likely they, there probably was somebody there before you, the screw may still be in place. It may be missing. Uh, but once you do that, same methodology as the outer door belt, weather strip, and molding. You want to gently pry the run channel trim away from the door frame. Depending on each and every car, this could be a little easy, this could be difficult. Uh, all I can tell you is work in a methodical manner and just don't go at this like a bull in a china closet. So once you get to the corner here, the door frame, pull it away and you're gonna slide it towards the front of the car and it'll remove it from the frame and the L bracket. Okay, and then copy paste on the vertical piece. Wanna make a note real quick, if you can't pull these off with just your fingers and your hands, take you a microfiber towel. Again, this is all gonna de depend on the severity of the car and what you're trying to preserve or be careful with. You can wrap a microfiber towel around a large pry tool that covers some good surface area. That way you get a good bite, I guess, if you will. But you can gently push the run channel trim away from the door frame, and then you can lift out. Now, once the run channel trim is removed, again, going back to all the pins on the scenario that you're in, you will want to clean up your door frames. So microfiber towel, some all-purpose cleaner, et cetera. Some cars had painted body color door frames. So you would want to polish this with like a compound polish or even a cleaner wax, just to add some brightness and clarity and luster uh, back to the uh, upper portion of the door frame. And then of course, 85, 86 GTs and SVOs. These were painted in the dark gray paint uh, to match the rest of the trim and the rest of the tidbits on the car. So if you're in a spot to where this needs to be refinished, well then you will have to scuff and spray these with the LMR exterior dark gray paint. Uh, if you wanna know a little bit more about the painting procedure, we actually touched base on this in the 87 to 93 run channel trim video in the description. That way you can go check it out, see the steps and procedures it took to paint your door frames. But again, for the sake of this car, we're just gonna show kind of the dance you have to do to get your run channel trims back in or back on the door frame using the 5 resto trims that we just took off. But I like to start with the vertical piece first. And then what's gonna happen whenever you pull your 5 resto trims out of the box, the L bracket is going to be on the larger run channel trim, the boomerang piece. Y'all heard me refer to that uh, before. So remove the L bracket, the L bracket into the vertical piece. You start here at the bottom, kind of get it situated, and then you'll roll it onto the frame. You wanna make sure it gets aligned here with the corner of the door frame, and you can kind of gently push it on. I'm just going to, now I'm gonna go ahead and fully, I'm gonna go ahead and fully seat this. So for the large section of trim, coming at an angle, wanna make sure it engages with the L bracket, slide it toward the rear, and then we can begin seating it, pressing it onto the door frame. As you do this, it's, it's good to uh, keep this section away from the car, because if you just let this kind of hang out here like this, you'll scratch it. And as you can see, this has been scratched before by the uh, run channel trim. So we'll press this onto the car into place. And then you just want to go over it again with your palm, with the palm of your hands to make sure it's all fully seated. And then at the front there, we can install our screw. I'll be the first to tell you, rolling down the assembly line, there was no dead spot as to where this screw landed. This is with a self-tapping screw 
and it got installed wherever the run channel strip uh, was in its final position. Most cars had to be close, but being that these were all kind of hand assembled uh, in most aspects, that spot could just slightly differ uh, from car to car. So once you have your run channel trims back in, now is the fun part. You get to install the run channel weather strip. The door panel has to be removed from the car. And then once you remove all of your old run channel weather strip, which depending on the age of it, it could come out in somewhat of just a few pieces or it could just come out in shrap. Most of the cars that we touch around here, the stuff just comes out in several pieces. It falls on the floor, it'll fall down into your uh, the door frame. You have to get your vacuum in there, vacuum all the crud out, and then um, then you can come back in with your run channel weather strips. A good tip with the run channel weather strips is put a little dish soap on the back side. That way as you go to seat it uh, into the channel here in the door frame, it uh, kind of just goes right into place. So once you're all done on one side, you can do the same for the other, and then you can keep on keeping on uh, with the rest uh, of your car, which speaking of keep on keeping on, uh, whenever you're doing the run channel trims with as much procedure that's involved, think of all the things that you may need to replace while you're there. So any of the components inside the door, stuff like that, just think of those things whenever you have to do this stuff. And as always, if y'all have any questions, uh, just drop us a comment. Uh, we love talking to you down there, helping you out. Because at the end of the day, we're here to help customers and offer great parts. But other than that, we're gonna sign off, fellas. A good one. Like I said, uh, good to have a, a dedicated 1979 to 1986 part in the 5.0 Resto catalog. Uh, I know you all are gonna be happy about this one. We're happy about this one, because I think, uh, shoot, we put them on this car, and we put them on an 82 GT, we put them on an 85 GT, and I think we have a set for an 86 GT or the 79 Cobra. Uh, one of the two are both. So we've already used several sets uh, for cars here in the uh, warehouse, and we know a lot of you uh, are gonna benefit from this one as well. As always, if you find value in what we do, uh, subscribe to the channel, like the video, turn on notifications, and then until we see you in the next one, for all things Fox Body Mustang, keep it right here with the Real Enthusiasts, LMR.com.